Hello, I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. In this video, we're going to talk about the importance of properly installing a fire stop collar. Now, this is a fire stop collar. This is one for three inch pipe. They make them in all different sizes, but basically this is metal. And then the inside, this black material, once it's heated, this is called intumescent material, is going to expand and it expands up to 60 times. And the idea is it will close off the opening when say this PVC pipe melts to protect the house from a fire. So in this setup, let's imagine this is the garage side. And here we've got our block. This would be our garage floor. Here we've got our sill plate. We've got our rim joist or our band joist, depending on where you're at in the country, what you call it. We've got our floor joists. And then here would be the basement side or maybe the crawl space side. So with radon mitigation, we're often penetrating this firewall uh, because we come out of the basement or the crawl space into the garage and then up through the roof of the garage. And a lot of times we're going through the ceiling of the garage if they have that. So this one is installed properly. If you want to see how I installed that, uh, we've got a video on it here. And this one is in installed improperly. So a little bit about this setup. So I've got three inch pipe coming out here. The outside diameter of a three inch pipe is three and a half inches. So I've got a four inch hole drilled through here. And then I switched to three and five eighths when I went through the rim joist. That left me with a quarter inch gap around the pipe, the thickness of the drywall. So I use this intumescent fire stop sealant to seal off that opening. And then I installed my fire stop collar according to the manufacturer's recommendations. So my screws go into the rim joist back there. Now on that side, I drilled a three and five ace hole. So it's a pretty tight fit around that three and a half inch pipe. There's just a little gap. I did not use any of this intumescent sealant. I have my fire stop collar just secured with drywall screws into drywall. There's no structure behind that. So if I was to install that one properly and say there wasn't any structure wood behind it, I'd use something like a toggle bolt like this. And oftentimes that's what we end up doing when we're going through the ceiling of a garage because a lot of times that's a firewall and there's no structure behind it. So you wanna use it, something like this. So my plan is to start a fire under each of these and kind of see how they hold up. All right, now I'm ready to light my fire. I've got my kindling stacked up and then I've got pretty much equal sized pieces of firewood. So I'll try to keep the fire about the same size on each side. And then I also want to give a shout out to Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech. About three years ago, he did a video uh, where he tested attaching different or different types of attachment for the fire stop collars. Uh, so if you want to see that video, it's a great video. We'll put a link to that in the description below. So without any further ado, I'll get this fire started. All right, we can see we've got some melting going on here with the PVC, the 90 I've got here. No smoke coming through the back. This is just coming under the, under the sill plate there. Nothing coming through the pipes. All right, the pipes still look normal inside. This fitting is glued on, by the way. Looks like something's starting to happen on the bottom. Kind of some little curly black strands. I'm thinking it's a intumescent material starting to come out. This one still looks good so far. We can see there that fire stop color must be starting to smush that one in. And yep, right inside there, you can see right where that fire stop color is. That pipe's starting to get a little bit smaller in diameter. Looks like this one's just starting to get smaller as well. Pretty soft. That one's pretty soft too. You can see that it's getting crushed. And I don't think that one's as smushed enough. A lot more black material here. And you can see that fire stop color starting to push away from the wall. And that screw is getting pulled out from the wall where that one isn't yet. It's like the bottom one's starting to pull out as well. Don't see any smoke coming through the opening here. We have smoke coming through the holes here, the screw holes. Doesn't look like any is coming from around the pipe. There is some coming from under the sill plate though. You can see how much this material is expanded outside of that fire stop collar because it's not properly installed. 
It's allowing it to pull it off the wall. You can see it's pretty well crushed inside there. That one looks pretty far gone too, as far as being crushed. But that fire stop color is still attached to the wall really well. It's not starting to pull off at all. There's the proper one. And then there's the improper one. Substantially more coming off there. It looks like just that top drywall screw is holding it in. And I'm wondering if that wasn't so secured so well with that two hole strap on each side, I'm guessing this probably would just pull off the wall as that's what happened in Ruben's test is it just fell off. All right, we've got smoke coming through on that one. Fitting fell off. So we've got smoke going through the pipe into the house on that one, which wouldn't probably be a huge deal because it'd be tied into the slab and would be entering the sub slab area. You can see some smoke coming out through the pipe. See where these two, the hole is, the screw is pulled through. Top one's still hanging on. And that one looks like it's still not closed off all the way, but we don't have any smoke coming through. No smoke coming through around here. Just fell off. Sorry, my phone got too hot. The GoPro also overheated. And that fire stop color is still attached really well. The other one, two out of three screws came out. You can see all the smoke coming through the pipe and around the pipe. I can see out into what would be the garage through here. Pipe is melting. This one seems to be completely closed off now. I don't see any smoke coming through. Maybe just a faint whisper that might be coming under the sill plate there. All right, I think we're gonna call it there. It looks like we had a success on the one that was installed properly, and I would call this one a failure. We've got a lot of charring back here. If we had, say, wood or the subfloor on, maybe that would have started on fire. Definitely got a lot of smoke coming through here. So it's really important that you have a fire stop collar in the first place. Uh, there are many radon systems out there that do not have a fire stop collar. And then it's important that you install it properly with the correct hardware. I reached out to STI to make sure that I was installing these properly uh, when I got into the radon mitigation business. And then one thing as far as proper ins installation is you wanna make sure that it is installed on the pipe, not on the outside of the fitting. Uh, because I've seen some radon systems where, this is pretty hot still, the fire stop collar went around the fitting on a thin wall pipe uh, to get the proper fit. A few closing thoughts and observations that I'd like to go through that I noticed when I was watching back some of the footage and taking this demonstration apart. And the first thing that I want to, want to mention is that I intend this video in no way to bash anybody else uh, in the trades or other radon mitigation contractors out there. I understand that people are not intentionally leaving fire stop colors off or, in, or intentionally installing them the improper way so if you know somebody that could benefit from this video please share it with them it might help them get better and it might help save a life secondly as i was taking this apart i noticed that uh the smoke the whisper of smoke i was seeing on the side that was installed properly was probably coming from under the sill plate into the uh, uh band joist or rim joist and was between sandwich between the the drywall and the rim joist and that's where it was coming out around the, the pipe here so i don't think it was coming through from the garage into this side uh, from around that pipe and the reason i think that is because this sti sealant is still intact here and there really weren't any gaps or anything that i could see as i took it apart you'd see we're missing a little bit here but that is left on the fire stop collar here. Also, you can see that this was entirely closed off. There's not a hole left here. So the fire stop collar did a really good job of pinching that off. This is actually really hard to get out. I had to pound it out uh, with a hammer and you can see how I dented the pipe getting that out. So it was in there really tight. Here's the fitting. So there are no uh, gaps or anything in there. There's not an airspace through there. It's all solid. So the fire stop collar not only sealed off this end of the pipe, it also sealed off that 90 before it fell off. Uh, 
And then here's the fire stop collar itself. This was still really solid. It didn't really show any signs of failing. Uh, I could stand on this and it was still uh, really solid. I had to unscrew it to get it off. Now on this side, this is the one that was installed improperly. You can see the pipe is much shorter. They were all the same length to start with. It's really charred, it's deformed. We had a lot of smoke and heat going through here. I could bend that or when it was flexible, I could squish it. Here's this side of it. This was the garage side this way. And obviously a big hole through there. This 90 fell off a lot sooner and you can see that there's a big hole here. So it did not seal either the pipe or the 90 off. And then one thing that was really interesting, so this was kind of orientated in about this direction. And you can see a lot of the fire stop intumescent material, a lot of its energy was not directed to kind of close off that pipe. It kind of oozed out the side here uh, and just pushed it off the, the drywall. So I think that's why we had the failure on that one. So that was kind of interesting. Also, the drywall that we used is not the drywall you would use in a garage. This is just half inch extra light that we had laying around. So we used that for the demo. And also one thing that was just interesting is there was, there was a lot less damage to this side of the drywall versus the drywall on this, this side. Um, and then just in closing, you wanna be really careful with firewalls. If you have a big hole or anything in your firewall, you wanna make sure that you um, patch that properly so you don't get a fire spreading to the house. Uh, you don't wanna use something like a, an access panel uh, because just like this pipe melted away, you know, this is gonna melt away and this is you know, not gonna make an airtight seal. So you get smoke and fire potentially spreading to your house. So be careful with firewalls, make sure you protect them. Uh, I hope you found the video helpful. Again, please consider subscribing or sharing it with somebody that may find it helpful. And until next time, I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. Thank you so much for watching. Are you a radon mitigation contractor that would like to be more confident when giving estimates or installing a mitigation system? Would you like to reduce callbacks and stand out from your competitors? Would you like to offer more value to the families you serve? If so, we have a hands-on radon course coming up where we are gonna focus on optimal mitigation, pressure field extension testing, suction point placement, pipe size, fan selection, and the effects of sealing. To sign up for our course, click the link in the description below. I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. Thank you so much for watching.